Oh, it's working. Hi. So I, I don't like, I've decided, I don't like Facebook Live. It makes me a bit jumpy about like when the eye pops up, who's watching me? And that's what makes me get all confused to go off on a tangent about what I'm talking about. I know I look like a mad woman. I do look like a, well, I'm not a mad woman. I look like one. Um, it's actually 25 to 3 in the morning. And I'm awake again. But I'm actually awake for a reason tonight because I'm absolutely, I've, I've had enough. I'm not like I've had enough that I'm going to kill myself. Don't panic. I wouldn't do that. But I, I, I really am at the end of my rope now. With all I'm seething because I've sat here and just thought about all this benefits crap all night and how much of a load of bollocks it is basically. I've read countless horror stories over the last two weeks about people who don't get it and it's, it's just shocking, it's absolutely shocking. It just, it, it's unreal. I'm not just talking about me now. I'm making this about a lot of other people as well who have clearly got problems and need help and it's just not happening we're not we're genuine cases who should have to go and prove that we're not well i mean you've only got to look to and look at me and you know that i can't move you know that i'm riddling around like an idiot i'm absolutely knackered yeah i can't pick up a cup of tea yeah, really it's obvious for anyone to see but it's us obvious cases that are getting zero points on our assessments what the hell is that all about because these people who are deciding our lives for us basically you know i'm not being dramatic and everything i'm saying is true as genuine cases who clearly obviously got problems are the ones that are getting zero points and getting knocked back for things and it's not fair it's just bizarre it, it, anybody can see it's wrong i don't understand what people aren't getting about it why right i want to know this and if anyone's got the answer please tell me why have I, but people like me, not just me, I'm not being selfish, I'm, I'm, this is a bigger thing than just me, and there are people a lot worse off than me, I know that, you know, but people who have got illnesses, and, you know, chronic degenerative neurological illnesses, like I've got, you know, I ain't getting better, today is as good as it gets for me. Do you know what that's like to know that today's your best day that's only slowly going to go downhill from here and i'm not being negative and i'm all for being positive believe me i am and i am like that you know i slap a smile on my face and when people phone me oh you're right yeah yeah fine really i'm thinking oh my god but I don't let people see that. I never have. That's the problem. Because I've got on with things as best as I can, even though it's been killing me, literally. And no, I'm not making that up either. You know. I've bloody nearly killed myself. Carrying on. Dragging myself to work. I could barely get out of bed in the morning. And I mean, I couldn't get out of bed. Not like, oh, I couldn't be asked getting out of bed. No, I mean, I literally couldn't get out of bed in the morning. I couldn't lift myself up. It was hell. I felt so ill. I could barely function. 
but I still carried on and I still went to work and I still tried my hardest as long as I could before I had to give in to the fact that I couldn't do it anymore. I, I felt like useless in my job. I, I broke down one day and I, I just said, I've had enough, I feel like a burden here. I really, and it's embarrassing. It is embarrassing to feel like that in your place of work. I've worked since I was 16. Since I left school, I've never been out of a job. I've never been lazy. And anyone who knows me knows what I used to be like 10 years ago before all this shit happened. I'm sorry about the language, but it's true. That's how I feel. I come on here now to be brutal. It's three o'clock in the morning and I am fuming about all this shit. It's just bullshit. Absolutely. I'm not asking for something. I don't want to be like this. Do you think I'll enjoy my life? My life's at hell 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's that's the truth. I dread going to bed at night. I dread getting in my own bed because I know that I'm not going to be comfortable. I know that I'm not going to sleep. Can you imagine what that? Most people love the thought of getting into their bed, don't they? You know, your bed's your little safe haven, nice, calming. I hate it because I know I'm not going to sleep and I'm not going to be comfortable. You know, I know I'm going to be in pain lying in my own bed. And it's this is all true. I'm not, I'm not telling, I'm not in the habit of lying. I've never been a liar. As, you know, regardless of what people might say or think that they know, I've never been a liar. That's not who I am. And why anyone would think I would lie about, uh, you know, my disability and how I feel because I don't enjoy this. I don't enjoy, I haven't enjoyed the last 10 years of looking in a mirror and not even recognising myself. I mean, I look really bad at the moment because I'm just, well, it's three o'clock in the morning and I'm ill and I'm naggy and I'm fuming. And I've, I'm coming on here, right? I don't care what I look like. I really, I've gone past all that now. That's not what's important to me anymore. I've got bigger things to worry about. I wouldn't come on here, right, looking like the mess that I do, unless I was doing it for a good reason. I'm not doing this for fun. I'm not doing it to be famous. I'm not doing it for sympathy or pity. I don't want you to feel sorry for me. I'm okay. I want you to back me and I want you to, to help me get this message across to people who need to hear it because they're just bonkers they're absolutely how dare they how dare they sit there and decide our lives for us how dare you what what gives you the right to make a judgment on my life when it's all based on lies anyway because my pip assessment was lies pure but I haven't got any evidence for that. There's nobody there with me. Naively, I thought it, you know, I wouldn't need anybody there with me because I am ill, I've got Parkinson's, I can't move. And that was clearly obvious on the day of the assessment. Yet it was written in the assessment that I was walking at a normal pace. I can't walk at a normal pace. I can't walk at a normal pace the best of times, let alone, you know, when I'm having a bad day. You've seen me. You can't put that on. You can't put this on. You can't put on flailing around like a mad woman because I can't control what I'm doing. An Oscar winning actress couldn't act like that. It's impossible. And I just, I'm just, I'm livid. I am livid that people are there making a judgment on our lives when it's just a pack of lies anyway. How am I supposed to go and defend myself in court? I think, yeah, it sounds dramatic, but that's what it is. You, you have to go to a court like a criminal, like you're doing something wrong to pr prove and, you know, make yourself look desperate in front of people to, to actually beg people to believe that you're ill. What is that all about? It's as clear as anything under your nose. 
that I can't move properly. I can't pick up a piece of paper. If I had to swear on the Holy Bible in court, I wouldn't even be able to hold the bloody thing. Yeah, you know, I've got to go and plead my case, plead my case that I'm not well and that I've got Parkinson's, which is only going to get worse over time. And at the rate things are going, it's not going to take long for me, unfortunately. Um, but it's just, it was all lies. You know, I wasn't walking on all this. My feet were like that when she came to my house. They were clawed up and I even showed her. I put my feet under the woman's nose. And I, I think she even commented like, oh yeah, oh that's awful. Yet she's saying in the, in the report that I was walking at a normal pace, like a normal person. What a load of rubbish. I don't walk like a normal person on a good day. You can clearly see that there is something the matter with me. You know? And I'm not bonkers. I, I'm not... I know exactly what I'm saying, but I've, I never get angry. But I had my court date like two weeks ago and I've been fuming ever since. But quietly fuming. I've had emails, I've had letters, I've had flipping my representative who couldn't even come here because he was in Scotland. What's the point in that? What's the point in having a representative when they can't even be with you? What a pointless thing is that? You know, I had to go in there on, you know, in on the in there on my own, totally blind. I I don't know what you know. I've never been on benefits. I don't know what to say. You know, I maybe I should go for acting lessons to the Citizens Advice Bureau, like everybody else does, where they teach you. And this is well known fact. You can go, and they will teach you how to act at your assessment. And these people who are deciding all our life, they know full well that this goes on. They know that people can go and be taught how to look. It's just absolutely, it's beggar's belief, it's sick. It is sick. For people like me who really are ill, and, you know, really do struggle every day. My, my life is shit, if you want the truth. Every day is hard work. Every hour is hard work. You know, I dread going to bed because I'm not comfortable. I wake up in the morning and the first thought that pops into my mind is, oh God, here we go again. What shit's going to happen today? You know, I, I, try, I, I try to be positive. You know, I do, I really do. It's when it's just, when it's your life, it's hard. You know, I might look like I'm smiling. It's not hard, is it? Hi, hi, yeah, I'm fine. Anyone can do that, but inside, inside, uh, you know, I mean, you, I spent the last 10 years, right, watching myself disappear. And this is the brutal truth now, right? I am not the person I was 10 years ago. I am not at all. Some good, some bad. I've had my personality stripped away from me, no fault of my own. I've had my confidence snatched away from me, no fault of my own. I've had my looks stolen away from me, no fault of my own. I've had my abilities taken away from me, where I can't, I can't even eat a sandwich. You know, I've had my ability as a mother taken away from me. Because I'm not the same mum that I was 10 years ago. And I feel guilty. It's not it's not my son's fault that I'm not well, is it? It's not mine, but it's not his fault either. You know? I lavish him with money every day of the week because I feel guilty that I can't be the mum that I was. I can't even make him a cup of tea, for God's sake. It's things like that people don't understand. People, you do not understand it until you've been there yourself. What it's like to, to feel yourself just going, just drifting away. 
not being able to clean your teeth properly, not being able to wash your hair properly, you know, having your 70 odd year old parents running ragged around doing your washing, doing your ironing, cutting your grass. Do you know what that's like? So I've not only got all the guilt of that, it should be the other way around. I should be running around after them cutting their grass. And I feel guilty. My dad's knees, right, are shot. He should be having an operation to have his knees. He's not having it done because of me. Because he doesn't want to not be able to drive to take me places that I need to go. And they don't know that, you know, they, they don't know that that's how I feel. So don't tell them. What is stays on Facebook, stays on Facebook. They don't need to know that. But I feel guilty. Do you know, sitting in the dining room watching my 72 year old mother cutting my grass, sweating her ass off. You know, it's just not fair. They shouldn't have to do that for me. There's things in place to help me. But I don't qualify for it because I've got clean hair and clean nails. And I'm not kidding you when I say that now. How wrong is that? How utterly, utterly ridiculous is that? And that's what's written in my report. Oh, uh, she had clean hair. Zero points. Oh, her nails look quite clean. Zero points. She was appropriately dressed. Zero. I mean, what the hell has that got to do with anything? They're focusing on things that they... It's just got nothing to do with the fact that I've got an illness that I can't move or I'm either moving around too much and making strange facial movements. Everyone thinks I'm a freak. I don't want to go out of the house because I get embarrassed because I know people look at me. You know, and everyone says, oh, no, they're not. No, they are. People are just being kind. People stare at me. And I don't blame them because I probably would if it was somebody else. And I was fine. You know, I think that I was pissed in the queue at being in bargains because I couldn't get my money out of my purse. Because I shouldn't have that illness at my age. I'm 43 years old and I, I feel I am living the life of a 90 year old woman. I am. I've, uh, you know, I've been diagnosed for seven years and everyone, you know, deteriorates at a different rate. It is tricky to gauge things with complicated illnesses like, and it is complicated. It's actually more complicated than anyone could ever imagine. I mean, I've educated myself over the last seven, eight years, I suppose, when I started looking into it, because I was symptomatic for about two years before I got diagnosed, because it took that long, because they just didn't, oh look, I can open my hand, oh God, zero points. What a load of old shit. <sighs> you know, yeah, so two years probably took me to get diagnosed. You know, after getting fobbed off a million times. You know, but I even broke down in the doctor's surgery to that because I said, there's just something wrong with me. There is something wrong with me. I cannot move my arm properly. I cannot write properly. I need you to help me. And lo and behold, thank God, after like 18 months, they actually did something about it. I, I, I haven't slept for six months and I didn't know why. I was sobbing at night because I just wanted to go to sleep. I, when I'm awake now, it doesn't bother me now, it's normal. But, yeah, it's just, it's wrong. It's wrong. Zero points because you've got clean air. So basically what they're saying is... If you're disabled or you've got a chronic degenerative brain disorder, you've got to be a dirty cow. You're not allowed to have clean hair. You're not allowed to have nice nails. You're not allowed to have nice clothes. What a load of old shit. I'm sorry, but it is. Let's just tell it as it is. What planet are they living on? You know, yeah, I've got clean air. I didn't wash it myself. Somebody had to do it for me, but it's clean. You don't know that. They don't know anything. She was in my house for half an hour. 
half an hour to dictate how I live. I've been on the waiting list for months to get a support worker and an OT to come to my house to have a look around and see what I need. Well, I'll tell you what I need. I need a shower seat for a start off because I'm lucky I haven't killed myself by knocking myself out because I've fallen in it quite a few times now. I need rails on my bed so that I can drag myself up in the morning because at the moment I just roll and drop on the floor. You know, I've never been offered any of these things. Seven years I've been diagnosed for, I've never been offered physio. I've never been offered an OT. I've never been offered counselling, which, you know, looking back, I probably could have done with because I found out I had Parkinson's by having a letter dropping on my doorstep. How wrong is that? Really? Do you tell people that they've got life-changing illnesses that aren't going to get any better, just get worse, by writing them a letter of about three sentences long? You know, it's a good job I wasn't of a delicate disposition, because I just taught myself. Yeah, it's a good job I'm a bit robust. You know, but I've had to be robust. You've got no other option when you dealt this shit out of the cards in life. And it's like that saying, you know, you don't know how strong you are until you've absolutely got to be. Well, that's bloody true, I tell you. Because I never thought I'd be able to stand anything like this. I mean, I'm, I'm one good thing that has come out of me being ill is I'm a lot stronger than what I used to be. A lot stronger. I don't... I am a lot stronger. I won't take no shit in my life now. Because I can't afford to. Because, see now, people don't get this either. When you try and explain these neurological conditions, and it's not just Parkinson's, there's loads. There's hundreds of them. Google it. You can find loads out. Um, and you can also find out that I'm actually not telling lies about everything I say. Everything I say is true. In fact, there's, I could probably be like a, a neuro specialist now because I, I have, I know everything. I have educated myself because I've had to about Parkinson's and loads of other stuff. But Parkinson's is so complex. You wouldn't think it is, but it is. There's loads of things going on with Parkinson's, loads of different causes and problems. And, and there's about 57 different symptoms with Parkinson's. Did you know that? No. Yeah, it's, it's not just a tremor. I haven't got one. I haven't got a tremor, but I've still got Parkinson's and it's quite bad. But there's loads of different types of Parkinson's, but it's really complicated. Well, I won't bore you with all the facts and figures. But it's a v these neurological conditions, going back to what I was trying to say, I'm trying not to go off on a tangent because I know I'm trying to be informative on these videos and I know I'm not being because I'm just coming on and rambling on like a mad woman. But there is meaning to what I say. You know, if you stick around long enough to, to see it to the end, which is the problem because most people don't because they get bored and think, oh, moaning again, drama queen again, telling lies again, putting it on again. Well, none of it's put on. None of it. I'm not being a drama queen. I don't want sympathy. I'm not trying to be famous. Would I put myself out there looking like this mess? I, I'm that angry about a lot of things, about the letdowns and the, and I've had more letdowns than the DWP, but we'll go into that little conversation because I would be here for two hours. Um, just let down by things that are supposed to be in 
place to help and they're not doing what they're saying they're not they're not delivering what they're supposed to be delivering that it says on the tin you know but back to what i was saying before parkinson's and neurological conditions are very much emotional emotionally based illnesses that oh guess what stress and hassle and upset and you know running around here there and everywhere trying to get proof that you're ill do you know what it does it just makes us sicker it makes us more sick than we already are and dramatic as it may sound and you've probably seen it in the headlines drama dramatic headlines you know the dwp are killing people because they're not getting what they should be getting genuine cases who have clearly got issues and are ill visibly aren't getting the help that they should be getting because it's the odds are all stacked against you because you've got liars writing false reports I didn't have anyone with me when I had my assessment naively maybe but that's the type of person I am I'm a genuine person I wouldn't think that somebody would do that I don't know why because I've encountered quite a few nasty people in my life you know they were just out for what they can get and then dump you you know they're not the people who they make themselves out to be I've met loads of people like that so why I, I thought she'd be any different I don't know but yeah it's just all total lies and she's, what did she say oh she quoted she quoted in a report that I had um, nightwear on I had a, a fluffy onesie on actually furry onesie with rabbit ears is what I had on and um, she then went on to say that I took my shoes off and put why would I have shoes on with a onesie I didn't have anything on my feet I had bare feet because I showed you my toes were all curled up I didn't have shoes on but she said I took my shoes off and I placed them on the floor zero points it's an absolute joke it is you know just because I've got clean hair it doesn't mean to say that I haven't got Parkinson's you know yeah yeah I know how much change to give out of a pound if I spent you know if you spend 75p I know how much change to give you actually as ridiculous as it sounds that is a question that somebody got asked on their assessment to, to establish whether they were capable enough to manage their household finances and bills if I gave you a pound and you spent 75p how much change would you give me for goodness sake I mean the simple how ridiculous I mean I'm crap at maths but even I know that it doesn't mean to say that you can manage your bills and pay everything on time and organize and deal with debts from 20 years ago but all of a sudden decide to land on your doorstep reckoning on that you owe them 200 quid well I can't remember what I did yesterday let alone what happened 20 years ago I don't know but those are the type of questions that they're asking people. I mean, really, you know, give us some credit. We might have illnesses and be disabled, but we're not sick. But that's that's what that's how they envisage people. That is how they envisage people who have got disabilities. I, you know, how how horrible is that? You know, if you've got a disability, you've got to have dirty hair, dirty nails. You know be comatose barely breathing and sick as shit well actually no we're not 
I've got Parkinson's, but I'm not thick. In fact, I'm quite intelligent. Don't get me wrong, I might have dementia in 30 years' time, but at the moment, you know, I'm not stupid. And just because I've got Parkinson's, it doesn't necessarily follow on that I'm stupid. And it's, it's just, it's just nasty, horrible. You know, that's what they think about us. You know, I might look a bit weird sometimes when I'm, when I'm sinking in the chair now. I might look a bit odd. I might pull a few odd faces now and again. You know, but it's just like, I could go on for days on this subject. There's just no help there for, for real people. You know, I, I, I'm not a liar. And, you know, who would lie about having a, a disability like Parkinson's or hunting? Do you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. I, like, people say, haven't you got a blue badge? No. Blue badge? You're having a laugh. I can't get a blue badge. Well, why not? Well, because I don't qualify for one. Because I don't get PIP. Because you've got to have PIP to get a blue badge. Everything follows on. You know, let's just talk about this now. We need to come up with a new name for this, um, what do they call it? Award thing. Because at the moment it's called PIP. Right. Now, you know, I know some of us thick people who, who have got these illnesses and disabilities won't know this, won't understand. I'm being sarcastic, by the way, because we all understand. It's not, it doesn't take a genius. They just think we're idiots. Personal independence payments. Now, what does that tell you? Look up the meaning of it. Personal independence payment is a payment for people with disabilities who have difficulties with everyday living and mobility and do you know what it's for? It's to allow them to stay independent for as long as possible. What a load of shit. It needs to be called can't be arsed getting off the sofa independence payment. That's what it needs to be called. And I'm sorry if you don't like what I've said but it's true. I can't work anymore. I can't do my job. Do you think I like that? I hate it. Another thing that's been snatched away from me, being able to work. I've worked since I was 16. I've never been out of a job. You know, I was always busying myself around. I always had a cloth in me, I'm cleaning me out. There's a shit all now. And sorry about the language, but, you know, I'm just being brutally frank, to be honest. I'm absolutely livid. I, you know, I can't do those things anymore. Do you think that's, that I like it? Do you think I enjoy living like this? I hate it. I hate it. You know, yeah, I worked. I might have moaned about going to work, like we all do, you know, God, can't be asked. But do you know what? I would give anything. To be able, one morning, right? I can't, I can't remember what it feels like to be normal. I can't remember. You know, this is normal for me now. I just can't even remember what it was like to get out of bed and not hurt. I can't remember what it's like to get out of bed straight away. You know, but please believe me, and I'm sure. All my fellow <laughs> ill people who struggle with just trying to get through a day. Because that's what we do. I might slap a smile on it. I might even put a bit of red lipstick on if I can hold me pen long enough to do it. Pen, lipstick, whatever. And I might slap a smile on. But it's hard work. It is hard work. It's brutal. 
it is brutal. You've got to be made of, this isn't for the faint-hearted. It isn't. And you know, and I don't, I'm not being horrible when I say this, but I would, I would really like for an able person who feels relatively normal. And when I say relatively normal, I mean someone who can get out of bed in the morning and go to a job. You know? Someone who can jump in the shower as soon as they get out of bed. I'd love to be able to do that, but I can't do that anymore. It takes me two hours to be able to move properly. If I'm lucky. You know? If my tablets decide to work like they should. Which, to be honest, they don't really. Um, I don't they ever will, but that's a whole other story. Um, but yeah, I'd love to be able to do that. I'd love it. And I'd like for somebody to just experience how I feel for a day. You know, I won't wish it on them permanently. I won't wish it on anyone permanently because it's awful. And I know there's people worse off than me. I know that. I really do. I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not thick. And I'm by no means doing this for my own benefit. I am trying to do something big here. Because if I've been dealt this shit hand of cards, right? I'm going to do something about it because it's wrong. It's so wrong. The system is, it stinks. To be quite honest with you. And how these people who make these decisions can sleep at night is just way beyond me. They must be real bitter hard characters to be able to, to look at somebody who's clearly struggling to move and in pain. You can't fake that. You can't fake it. You can't go to the Systems Advice Bureau and act like you've got a disability. Not a real one. It's impossible. You wouldn't want to. Would you want to flail around like I do? You wouldn't. You wouldn't do that for a million pounds because you'd be in absolute agony. You'd hurt yourself. Because that's what I do. I hurt myself on a daily basis. Not on purpose. Because I can't help it. Because this isn't telling this what to do properly. You know, I pinball around my kitchen. Because my sense of balance is totally gone. So I will fall and sway around my kitchen. Like I've had two bottles of wine at nine o'clock in the morning. I can't drink anymore. I can't think anything worse. I feel like I've got a hangover every day. I've got a constant headache. I feel constantly sick. Constantly tired. Constantly drained. Constantly just fed up to the back teeth of struggling to get through a day. And that's true. That is so true. That is what I do. That is what a lot of people do in my position. And we're getting, we, we're having lives of hell. I've got 10 letters in the drawer there, roughly, all asking for the same thing. Proof that I'm ill. Come and live with me for, for 24 hours. That, that'll be enough proof for you that I'm ill. Experience what that's like. Not half an hour. That's not long enough. I want you to see the full true story of what send somebody around here. I would gladly invite them into my house to come and stay here for 24 hours with me and they will see what it's like. It's not funny. It's not funny. And it's not attractive. Don't get me wrong, I'm not always like that. I might have an hour where I actually, you know can put a full face of makeup on and, you know, 
smile for the camera. But that's what annoys me because people will see that and think, oh, she looks all right there. There's not, nothing wrong with her. Look at her. Out in China. What a load of shit. You come and you live with me for a week. Then you'll know what it's like. You don't need any more proof than that. Come and be a fly on the wall in my house. But they won't do that because they, the camera can't lie, can it? Nobody's got the balls to do it. You know, it's easy. Yeah, my door's open. Come and film me for a week. God, I'll put this on, right? Facebook, right? I don't care. Send it to Holly and Phil. Send it to the one show. Send it to Loose Women. I'll go on all these programmes. I'm not, I don't care anymore what people think about me. I'm not in this to my own benefit. I don't care about anything anymore. What, what could be worse than what's already happening? You know, what could be worse than what's already happened? I've, my best years have gone. That's the truth. That's the brutal fact. As much as I'm positive and as much as I, you know, I might have a little shimmy around the kitchen when I can, which is very rare. But yeah, I do, you know, I, I do put a smile on it. No, nobody's ever seen me like this before and I'm putting it out there for everybody to see. But I'm not doing it for no reason. I need help. Millions of people need help and we're not getting it. It is beyond a joke. You know, we just have our lives snatched away from under us. You know, nine years ago, we are jollying up at a party looking gorgeous and now look at the state of us. We haven't asked to be like this. We don't enjoy it. It's crap. I would swap places with anybody tomorrow to have my, the way I used to feel back. I would. You know? But like I said, I've never been offered anything. What, what What's wrong with that picture? You know, I got told I had a life changing illness by a letter on my doorstep. That's not right, is it? That's not like, that's not humane, is it? You know, yes, your test results show that you have got Parkinson's. Um, you'll get an appointment in about six months time. In the meantime, take all these wacky medications that are going to send you around the bend and make you feel even worse and actually probably make your long-term prognosis worse, as I've learned recently. Um, yeah, crack on, basically. That's, that's, what you, that's what it's like. You get plied with all these pills by people that, you know, you, you trust to do the right thing. And look what happens. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I, I, I didn't know any better at the time. It's only like as, as the years have gone on that I've found things out because I've, I've had to because I need to know what's best for me. So I've read copious amounts. I, there's nothing that I don't know about Parkinson's and I'm not saying that to be big Eddie, but there isn't. Because we do read things and we do find out about things. I mean, I do delve into things quite a lot deeper than probably your average person would, but that's just because I'm nosy. But boy, am I glad I was nosy. You know, I I think when I first got diagnosed, I was on about five different pills. That should never have happened. That should never. It's supposed to be like, you know, slowly, slowly catchy monkey to give you the best possible chance of lasting a bit longer, for want of a better phrase having a, not bad, not great, but not bad quality of life for longer. Well, unfortunately, that didn't happen for me. 
I don't know what happened there, to be honest, but like I said, I didn't know any better at the time. And I just did what I thought was the right thing to do because I got told that that was the right thing to do. So there's me taking all these meds. I mean, I, I probably tried bloody all of them, to be honest. And that's why, I, I mean, I, it's not rocket science, is it? That's why I struggle now. That's why my fluctuations are so bad. Because I've been on every concoction of medication there is right from the start. You know, that's cut my time in half straight away. Because it's not giving you much option, is it, to go any down any other road? But it's true. It's true. You know, take these pills see me in six months ridiculous i've been offered counseling you know and it's enough to you know what brain cells i did have it's enough to do the rest and isn't it being told that and basically left to sort it out yourself you know no offer of counselling, no offer of support, no offer of physio, no, no offer of OT. I've had to go and find my own way around these things. I've had to go and ask for, for a support worker and OT to come and see me. I've had to go and ask for it. Why isn't it being offered to people who need it? I have got a letter in that kitchen that says I've got a severe form of Parkinson's. Why aren't I being offered all these things? I don't understand. Why have I got to go chasing around, trying to sort it out myself? It's just ridiculous. Uh, you know, it's like these, you know, assessments and, you know, you get zero, zero points times two for me. Which is just, a, just obviously a load of crap. Zero points. Time. Yeah, I'm quite articulate now. Yeah, I'm moving around all right. I wasn't half an hour ago. In fact, you've probably noticed that I've loosened up a little bit since I've been speaking. But that's what it's like. It's it's up and down, up and down, like every hour. I don't know where I'm going to be like from one hour to the next. I'm not reliable. I can't arrange to do things because nine times out of ten I can't go. If I feel like it, because that's not that I don't enjoy doing anything anymore. I used to love getting ready to go out, you know, music on, glass of wine, getting ready, doing my hair all nice. Do you think that happens now? I can't think of anything worse or anything more draining. The thought of getting ready to go out and dog myself fills me with, I just, no thanks, I'd rather have a cup of tea and lie on the sofa all night. I'm 43 years old. I know what's for me. I'm not stupid, I know. You know, it's a downhill, unless they come up with some miracle cure, which I don't think is going to happen in my lifetime. You might get, you know, something and you're all right for a few months or whatever, but it's, they don't, they're not long term fixes, are they? They're temporary fixes. Being realistic. I know there's people worse off than me. I do appreciate that. I know. You know, I'm sure you're sitting there, oh, look at it, listen to it bleating on. You know, I've got six months. I know that. And, you know, I'm speaking for all you lot as well. You know, I know people who have got cancer. I know, you know, people who have been given months to live. I know people who have had cancer diagnosed and died within two weeks. It's, it's just awful. And something's got to be done. You know, what is the matter with these people? I just don't get it. It's just common sense. It's their staring everyone in the face. It's just crazy. 
and I don't want to offend anybody and I'm not belittling anyone's I'm really not because I'm not like that I'm actually quite a nice person regardless of what other people might think because I know that, well I know for a fact there's people who don't think I am why I don't know you know because I am just a really nice girl you know I'm not I've never been high maintenance I've never been you know I'm not up my own ass I'm not you know if I was up my own ass I wouldn't be on here now would I look like a state but I'm that annoyed and I'm that sort of concerned about the effects on on people's health that this is all the stress is caused and it's just, I mean they are they are telling how does this make sense they are demanding and I would use that as a strong word because they are they're demanding that people with illnesses chronic illnesses and these disabilities degenerative neurological illnesses right that can actually probably barely leave the house because they either can't or mentally they can't because they've they can't be in crowds and they can't go outside because it's just all too much and that's a real thing you may laugh if you've never experienced it but it's not funny it really isn't and i could i could shake people who, who do snigger at things like that because you've got no idea what it's like to be to not want to go out of the house because you're embarrassed because people are staring at you it's horrible Ah, I go out to my bin in the dark. Ah, honestly, I do. I go out of this house in the dark because I don't want people staring at me. Because it's not nice. And people do stare and people do snigger. And people do think it's funny. When I'm pulling funny faces and I can't keep my head still and my arms are going... Do you know what it's so not funny it is i've got over the fact that i look like an idiot i don't care anymore i really don't care whether jane up the road lights me. i really, i've gone past all that shit i've got bigger things to worry about like um what am i gonna do when god bless them but they are in their 70s my mum and dad die and i haven't got anybody to help me then because i'm damn sure i'm not having my son wiping my backside for me that is not happening no way on this planet is it i would not expect him to do that i want him to have a nice life i don't want him running around after me I wouldn't let him do it anyway. I can't even remember what to say now. Yeah, what you know, what am I gonna do then? I'm on my own. The only re I mean I've I've got some really nice friends actually. Genuine, really nice friends I've only actually met in the last couple of years. And they are the nicest friends that I've ever had because they didn't know me before. They've only met me and know me as I am. So they are, I know they're genuine people because they accept me for who I am now. They, they don't care. You know, and they're really sweet and they. They take, they take me places that, you know, and it is really nice and they, they are, they are really nice people and they're very rare, really nice people. Sadly, this world is full of more so not very nice people, I think. You know, but 
but I, yeah, I've got friends, but you know, I'm not their responsibility, am I? Who have I got when my mum and dad die? Because they're the ones that do everything for me now, pretty much. You know, poor mum's there slaving over an iron, she's got her own to do, and mine. Am I washing? Cutting my grass? Going food shopping for me? Because I can't push a child around the supermarket and then pack it all. I could get it delivered, but then I get zero points on my PIP assessment because I can use a computer or a mobile phone. I mean, what chance do we stand, honest to God? And that, that's what she said on my report. Because she asked me how I went shopping, how I did my food shopping. And you look at my fridge, there's sod all in it. My fridge used to be full, it's got sod all in it now. Um, yeah, she asked me how I do my shopping, so I told her the truth. I said, well, most most of I do it online because it's easier because I don't have to traipse around the supermarket. You know, I can't pack my bags myself. But my dad always used to come and meet me at the supermarket at the till and pack the bags for me. Um, but yeah, I do it mostly online now. But sometimes if I'm having a good hour, you know, yeah, I might be able to, and I do sometimes go with my mum and dad. I just hate it, how pathetic because I'm 43 years old and go to supermarket with my mum and dad. Um, I do sometimes go with them, but I am like a snail going around there. Don't get me wrong, they're not much quicker. No, my mum is. My dad can be a slow arse around the supermarket. <laughs> but I'm like a snail walking around there because I can't walk properly. But I will try because I'm not, you know, I'm not a quitter. If I was a quitter, I would have given up years ago. I would have given up when that left landed on my doorstep, to be honest with you. Because, you know, though it's not a death sentence, so really I, I've got the, the lesser of, you know, a few evils. I am lucky. It's not going to kill me. You know, whereas other things like Huntington's and that, it's, it's not good. Motor neurons disease is not good. And that's what I thought I might have had. Initially, thank God I, I wasn't. I must be honest, I mean, all, you know, God, if you have got it, all respect to you, I tell you, and you're probably not moaning as much as I am. I'm not moaning, I'm just trying to get a point across how this system is so wrong. People who deserve the money, who are genuine cases, who are clearly unable to do things, aren't getting anywhere. In fact, our lives are being made hell by these constant letters about proving that we're ill. Like, oh, I went off on a tangent again then. But yeah, these, these people, they, they can't get out of the house. They either can't get out of the house physically or they just can't get out of the house because it, it's embarrassing or they freak out when they're in a crowd. And they're asking these people, I'm not saying me now because I just feel like I'm all me, me, me and I'm not. These people are asking the people like us to go running round left, right and centre trying to get letters for this, letters for that, proof for this, proof for that. Are they for real? It's, it's just common sense. Genuinely ill, people who struggle with everyday tasks and mobility can't go running around getting evidence. Evidence. And just the wording makes me feel angry. Evidence, proof. I'm not doing anything wrong. I am not doing anything wrong. I just want help because I 
I'm not able anymore. My God, it's, t it's taken me a long time to get to the point of actually admitting it myself. And anyone who actually knows me and wants to be honest about who I am, regardless of whether they like me or not, would tell you that I have I have tried, I have gone to the end of my rope. Like I said, I was, you know, I felt like a burden in work because I couldn't do my job properly. I hated it. You know, and people aren't going to like what I'm going to say now. Tough shit, I don't care. It's the truth. If I had, you know, I used to go, I used to be knack knackered, and I mean knackered. I mean, I remember my dad picking me up because I, I mean, I had to get my dad to take me to work and pick me up and everything up towards the end because I just couldn't, I couldn't, physically couldn't catch a bus because I bloody miss it because I, I just, you know, I'm boring myself with it. I bore myself trying to make people understand what it's like. Yeah, you just feel like slapping everybody and saying, wake up, you know? Would I be ranting and raving, making a video at 20 to 4 in the morning, looking like a bag of, well, God knows what. Putting myself across to being an absolute raving lunatic, which I'm not, by the way. You know, don't call the Samaritans. I'm not going to do anything stupid. I'm quite lucid about that. It's so frustrating. You know, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, I'd be absolutely, sh and I mean, shattered beyond belief, like. I used to fall. I used to fall asleep at my workstation. I would be sitting there, and I could actually feel myself going. And I'd do that head bob thing, you know. That's not right. You know, yeah, you can be tired, but you don't fall asleep. You know, come off it. You know, asking people to finish off what I was doing because I couldn't do it. What, you know, seeing people looking at me. Because I was struggling to move. And you could just, you can feel the, you can feel the pity coming off people. You can. And it's, it's so degrading. You know, it's not their fault. They, they don't know how to take it. They don't know how to act. You know, um, it is. It's horrible. It's embarrassing. You know, it's bad enough watching your own life fall apart. Let alone like, having other people watching it as well. Seeing you turn from one thing to something that they just don't even recognise anymore. That's me there. You know, where's she gone? I was ill then, but not as bad as I am now. That's another thing. Oh, this is ridiculous. You go for your court case to prove and give evidence that you're ill. But they won't. They won't judge you on what you're like now. Oh no, they want to know what you were like over 12 months ago when you first... What the hell? Does it really matter? Look at the bloody state I'm in now. And I'll be even more of a state in a year's time when I'm having to reapply again. And then even more of a state and less stable 12 months after that. What don't they get? Today is my best day. Tomorrow, be worse. 
and then the day after that will be worse and worse. I'm not going to get better. I'm not going to be cured. I know as much as I want to believe in all the research and everything. Yeah, and it's all great. It is really. I, so I don't want to sound ungrateful. I'm not, but I'm just being honest. I'm telling the truth. I'm not going to get any better. I'm not great now. There is clearly something wrong with me. I've got a doctor telling me in black and white there, you have got Parkinson's. It is a degenerative neurological condition. There is no cure for it. What more do they want? Blood, I, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You know, all I know is I felt like a zoo animal going into that courtroom. And I've been kept waiting 50 minutes longer than I should have been. That in itself was stressful enough. And the woman that went in before me, she got hers. You know, good and glad. She deserves it as well. I didn't go in there with any hopes high because I just, well, I never get my hopes high because I have so much bad luck. It's unreal. <laughs> you know, I'm not the only one. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being woe is me. My life's awful. But yeah, I've had shit hand in life with one thing and another. But yeah, I felt like a zoo animal walking, shuffling into that room like an old woman. Clearly in pain. I could barely even lift my head up, to be honest. And my mum and dad would say the same. You know, anyone that was in that room would have to say the same. Even though they, they said they couldn't decide whether I was ill enough or not. How pathetic is that? And their excuses, they didn't have enough evidence and they weren't knowledgeable enough about my condition. It's not hard to find out, is it? It was there waving in front of their face. I couldn't do that job, I couldn't. I couldn't watch somebody walk into that room like I did, in pain, clearly struggling, slower than a snail would walk, hunched over like an old 90-year-old woman, with my 70-year-old mum and dad holding me up. And that is how it happened. Truthfully. Brutally honest. I couldn't even hold a piece of paper. They made us sit down. Watched me as I walked across the long room. It was embarrassing, to be honest. It was I just felt hideous. I felt like I'd been dragged through a hedge backwards when I came out of there. I really did. I just, I couldn't believe it. I could not, I mean, we were all just, I mean, my dad kept his head on, I don't know. We were all fuming. How a much more, I mean, what else can you do? Apart from be yourself when you walk in. How can they sit there and say, oh, I'm sorry. We need more proof that you're not well. Just like that. Bull, you know, fucking sorry. <clears throat> Dug that out. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I've done so well. I haven't sworn at all. I might have said shit a few times. But... Well, that's me out of this morning then, isn't it? Just, just bleep over it, it's all right. I think I've done quite well to hold that on this long. 
Um, how can I do that? I couldn't do that. I couldn't look somebody in the face. It was in the state I was in and say, no, Sally, you don't qualify. You're not ill enough. Bullshit. Am I not ill enough? Like I said, I invite any cameras into my home. I'm not, you know, I'm not scared. I don't care what people think about me. I'll fart and do whatever. I'm going say I've got a wind problem, but that's also a symptom of Parkinson's. Yes, it is. Look it up. It's true. I'm not lying. Um, oh, God. I'm so sarcastic at times, but that's the way that I... That's what I do. I try and like make light of it a little bit and make a joke out of stuff. You know, like I'll say to people, oh, I wouldn't sit next to me if I was you, not unless you want to get into a food fight and I'll win every time. You know, clear an area of at least a metre because you'll get spilt drinks all over you. I do make light of it. Because that's how I get through it. Because if I didn't do that, I'd be in the corner crying my eyes out. 24 hours a day. Not only about the life that has gone from me, and the person, the person that I am has just disappeared into thin air. And I'm no longer the same person. But the thought of what's coming. I try not to, even though I know. I know, you know, what's good. I know where I'm going to end up. I know what I'm going to be like. Um, but I try not to think about it because what's the point? Because I'm only spoiling today. Thinking about tomorrow. Well, what's. There's no point. It's not, nothing's going to change, is it? I'm not going to get better if I cry. I'm not going to get better if I punch somebody's lights out am I what's the point so I just get through the day and you know it's not the same my days are a lot more drawn out now <laughs> um, they're a lot slower I'm slowing up now actually See, it doesn't last long. That's, you know, like, what have I had about 40, 40, 40, Christ, I've been talking for about an hour and a half. Um, yeah, 45 minutes of m moving about freely. But I can feel myself starting to slow up now. I can feel it all seizing up again. So that, that'll just, sh that'll just get, tell, I'm going. You can feel it coming. I can anyway, I don't know if everyone else is the same because everybody's symptoms are different, you know? That's why it's such a tricky subject. And you know what they say about, like, these rules are in place to make sure that the right people are getting what they should get? Are they? Oh, good. Good. Because that's how it should be. But it's not working like that, is it? It's not working. Because, you, I mean, I don't know I'm talking to when I say you, I don't know. You know, it's not individual people. You know, because it's, you know, it's not their fault. They're just doing a job, aren't they? At the end of the day. They, you know, they're just doing what they're told. So you can't just pick on the guy at the DF, you know, DWP is, you know, some people are more accountable than others. Let me be an assessor. I'll do it. We should be. We should be doing that job because we know what it's like. We should be deciding whether people get these benefits because we know what it's like. We live with it. We we know the ins and outs of a duck's backside when it comes to these things. We are qualified to do that job. Realistically. 
nobody else knows what it's like unless you've been in that situation unless you're living it you know like, like i said i get fed up of hearing my own voice sometimes trying to explain to people and people that actually should know better now because they've been with me seven years but they'll still say to me well what are you tired for real are you for real why am i tired and it's not just like you're only a little bit tired like go to bed it's absolutely physically mentally knackered times you're tired by a thousand and that's what i feel like i'm not exaggerating it's true there'll be a little miniature handful of people now that are agreeing with me but that miniature little handful of people need to I'm not saying do what I do because it's not everyone's cup of tea to be honest I didn't think it would be mine but I've just had enough now I really have had enough I'm absolutely livid livid with the whole thing the whole you know getting reassessed when you I'm sorry and I don't want to sound nasty but being reassessed when you're half dead are they mad are they bonkers I know I sound harsh when I say it, but how much brutal, how much more honest and brutal can you get? Because that is what's happening. You know, oh, oh, you have to reapply for your blue badge. You, what? Do you think I, I've all of a sudden been given the ability to walk? It just beggars belief, it does. I mean, can anyone hear what I'm saying here? Is anyone actually getting it? I just don't understand why so many people are screaming and no one's listening. It's just crazy. I just doesn't. I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. And I, well, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I'm just trying. I'm trying because I've had enough. I've had enough of being failed by people who actually really shouldn't be doing me good. You know, and this extends deeper than the DWP. But that's another. I'm not going into that because that's something else. But it's it's horrifying. Absolutely horrifying that these things are put in place to help people and they're not doing what they're supposed to. What are we meant to do? Just wither up and die, I suppose. But we don't all, we're not all, we don't want that. I want to be able to live here in my home and try and get on as best I can for as long as I can. That's what I'm trying to do. And that's what this money's meant to be for, isn't it? To, to, to make it possible for somebody in my situation who does struggle with stuff to allow me to do that independently for as long as I can. You know, you need to rename it because it's not doing what it's meant to. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? But you get penalised because you're trying. Because you look like you're trying. They say, oh, zero points. Bullshit. Oh, my God, it's unbelievable, it is. Unbelievable. Oh. I don't know what else to say really, but yeah, my final word on it, <sighs> dramatic as it may sound, and as ridiculous as you might think it is, these stories of like, and it does sound dramatic and it actually, it does sound like something out of a horror film, but it's actually happening, people are actually dying. 
waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and proving and proving and gathering more evidence for something that's obviously waving under people's noses to get these benefits. And it's just, it's just not wrong. What makes my life less important than anyone else's? What makes John's life less meaningful than anyone else's? You know, all right, Sally's, you know, a bit depressed. She's got mental health problems. Now, that's not a joke. They're no different to anyone else. They've just got a little bit of a different chemical balance in their heads, unfortunately. And there's probably something traumatic that's poked it and decided for it to go a bit haywire. It's not their fault. Do you think people with anxiety enjoy it? Do you think they like not being able to go out of the house? They don't. It is hell. It is hell to feel anxious when you're around people. You don't want to feel like that. It's not pleasant. You know, you feel like you're having a heart attack. Really? I'm not lying. That is what it feels like. You know, these people, they can't go out of the house. They're agoraphobic. Because they've got no self, they've got no confidence that because the chemicals in their brain aren't working the same as what yours are. Because some trauma has poked it and decided to send it a bit mad. They're not mad. They're not. They can't help it. And unless you've been in that situation, you really don't know what it's like. You can't even begin to imagine. You just think, oh God, is that scatty mare from up the road? She's not right in the head. But actually, she's no different to you. Just got a slightly little bit of a different chemical balance in her brain. That's all it is. And probably had a bit of a shit life as well. You know? And it's just as. And somebody who's, you know, on the very frayed edge of a very long rope. People are killing themselves because they can't take the hassle and the stress and the poking from people who want evidence, evidence, proof, proof. They can't deal with it. Are you stupid? You, you don't realise what an impact you're having on people's health by demanding all these things. I've been at the end of my tether for the last two weeks, I'll be quite honest with you. My rope is extremely frayed at the moment. Yeah, it is. I am, I have had it up to here. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. And having no one to turn to. You're just left out on the in the ocean to do fend for yourself with a load of pills. You can't get you can't get an appointment. I phone. This is a true story. I phoned my. I probably told you already. I phoned my Parkinson's nurse. Right. I just wanted to speak to her over the phone. I had to wait over a week to speak to her. When the girl said, oh, the next available appointment is the 3rd of February. I said, oh, I don't need an appointment. I need to speak to her on the phone. She went, oh, that is to speak to her over the phone. What good is that? People in my situation need to be able to get somebody to come and see them. All right, not in an hour's time, don't get me wrong. But not in a week and a half's time either. It's just not good enough. You know, yes, everyone's stretched to the limits. Yes, you know, you're always here wasting time in NHS and all that. I know, because that's what I work for. But it's just not good enough. A week, over a week to 
beat to somebody. That's just not right. It's not right. I'm sure you'll agree. It's mad. I, I can't believe I, I was like, I, my jaw must have hit the floor. Because I thought she meant to see her. <laughs> There's just no help. And it's dire. You know, at the risk of boring anyone, you know, it's stupid because I've been on here for an hour and a half and ranting and all. Oh, I've never done this before. I'm absolutely fuming. I'm actually running out of energy now. Oh, I haven't got the energy to be tired. Oh, to be tired. I haven't got any more energy to rant. But yeah, I mean, just, just one more thing. Let's just make it worse. The same about this whole stress and everything is actually killing, and it is killing people because I, I'm going to talk about me again. Do you know, I can't be any less selfish. Honestly, you really couldn't. I mean, even more so now because I've just got so much more empathy with people. And you know, when you're in this situation, you'll learn how to like appreciate the small things, and I mean the small things in life. I mean, like having a cup of tea, you know, that's small, you know, and so many people are ungrateful. And they are, and that's just, I used to be. I admit it, I was, because people don't, oh, shit. people don't appreciate what they've got, you know, you should be grateful, believe me, make the most of everything. Don't spoil today worrying about tomorrow because it's not worth it. What's the point? But I, yeah, I'm going slow now. I'm, I'm tired. I'm actually tired. Um, yeah, I've got, um, I actually got a kidney condition as well. Get the violin out. I know people are rolling their eyes because well, I just know they are. But yeah, it's true. I got a kidney condition. I had kidney failure. Um, not November, just gone. The November before 2018. That's how long I pushed myself to a limit for. I pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed myself. Didn't want to admit that I couldn't do stuff. Didn't want to admit that I was falling asleep when I got home from work at seven o'clock at night and not waking up again. See how slow I'm going now. Didn't want to admit that I couldn't do my washing. Didn't want to admit the house was a dump. Because I can't do my housework properly anymore. Didn't want to admit my garden was like a jungle because I can't cut the bloody grass. You know, it's taken me this long, but, you know, it was necessary because I did take myself to a limit where I was seriously ill. Took myself to A&E because I got fogged off by my doctor three times. So I actually took myself, feeling horrendously ill, the worst I've ever felt, ever. I wouldn't want to go there again. I'm trying not to, but I fear I may be. Um, yeah, I had severe kidney failure because my body was saying, huh, enough's enough. Can't do it anymore. And both my lungs were full of fluid. Um, I was very lucky. I was really ill. People think I'm lying. People think I made it up. I didn't. 
So why would I lie about that? I've never felt so ill in my life. I actually remember saying to somebody when I was in hospital, do you know what, if I'd have had a gun, I would have easily have turned it on myself. Because I've never felt so direly ill in my life. But because my body was basically poisoning itself because I wasn't getting rid of any toxins out of my body because I wasn't peeing properly. Um, and yeah, I was just getting poisoned. I was, uh, my body was shut down. My kidneys weren't working. My blood was crap because all the protein was leaking out. I was swollen. I went up four dress sizes within the space of a week. And then I was a size six when I came out of the hospital. I was like a twig. So yeah, I pushed myself to a limit because I didn't want to admit that I couldn't do it anymore. And that's what the result was. And what, what I'm trying to say in a long-winded way, I do apologize. I've got this, I've got some, it's called nephrotic syndrome now that I've been left with because of that, which I, I'm going to have now forever. And it may flare up, but I hope, hopefully I'll recognize the symptoms so it won't go as far as it did the last time because I was nearly dead. Um, but yeah, so I've got that now. And me having stress and hassle and anxiety and getting upset and wound up about these silly, silly things that we're expected to do when we're already ill is making me more ill. I could end up back in hospital again with kidney failure because of all the stress that I'm having now gathering evidence to prove that I'm, I've got a disability. And this is what they mean by, you know, it's, it's not good. They don't realise the impact that these things are having on people's health because they, they're ignorant. To, they haven't they don't know the ins and outs of these illnesses and why would they but I'm sorry if you're going to do that job you need to know what you're talking about because you're playing with people's lives and you're playing with people's health and what what gives you the right to do that you haven't got any right to do that. You know, we're entitled to have some sort of, you know, semblance of a normal life for as long as we can. That's all we're asking for. You know, I'm not asking for you to pay for me to go on a club 1830 all day because that's never going to happen. I'm too old now. But, you know, I'm not going to go rah, rah, rah in on a cruise ship. Am I? I just want some help to be able to maintain a semi-okay life. And I'm not being allowed to do that now.